Hey everybody, I want to talk to you today about sensitivity labels and pivot over to the Microsoft Information Protection Stack, how it fits in to that all that technology that Microsoft has and where you can use it. I'm going to go kind of overview today of what it is and then give you a demo of the end user experience. And then in other videos, I'll show you how to deploy it, how you as an admin should be thinking about these labels and designing these and testing them out. So uh, let's get into it. So um, sensitivity labels is again, going to be the way that you can classify your data. You are essentially with this tool designing a label schema or data classification service for your end users. And so here's an example of a, a good one that Microsoft has. I usually will use a pared down version of this for companies that are wanting to proof of concept this and see how it, it stacks. But essentially you are, as an IT staff or a, a business deciding, hey, end user, tag our data with this label, right? And based on that, we can trigger the rest of the protection. So end user essentially working on a Word document file and because of whatever criteria you set, you can have automatic classification happen to it. So maybe every document in the org is gonna start out as general, like Contoso business data, Contoso general, whatever you decide. We can also recommend data based on what's in the document, right? Or automatically classify it based on content that's in it. So maybe again, you're going to start every document as general, but you know, if you detect credit cards, it's going to automatically, or you're going to recommend or suggest the end user, Hey, this is probably something that's confidential because you have 20 credit cards in here. Let's do this. End user with this system is kind of designed to be the final leg, the final option to, come to, to decide, hey, what does this mean for us as an org? And so the end user does usually get manual classification option where they can provide or decide, hey, this is actually personal data or this is public data. This needs to be shared out. It's not actually a credit card. It's not actually this. But we can come in and require that or the end user can come in and do that with provided justification. And so it's a good option for your end users to tag and, and do this. When the document is uh, labeled as such, we are essentially writing into the document metadata that we can use to trigger the rest of the information protection stack, right? So we can trigger DLP, we can do everything else that we can because metadata is being written with it. It's gonna travel with the document and it's exposed in clear text again, so for DLP purposes. And so, yeah, good feature, good functionality here. Additionally, on top of the labeling and the metadata that's happening, we can optionally decide we want to actually encrypt the document. And this encryption is a really strong encryption capability from Microsoft and it lets us do some really advanced stuff. For instance, we could say because this document is labeled confidential or maybe it's a attorney client privilege document, we can say the rest of the org can't open this document. Only people that are in the executive management group can open this document and so on. So a good capability to have available to you. Definitely something that you know, is a great set of utilities to have in your back pocket with Microsoft so that when you need arises, you can use it. It's also a great for an overall health journey from Microsoft for doing a classification service. This is built into Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and a lot of other third-party products out there. And so if you're looking to start actually really classifying the data in your org and have it tangibly be tagged by your end users and really go full out, this is the product that you were going to want to take advantage of. So let's talk about like the life cycle of a document, how it looks like, uh, how it's going to travel with the document, what's happening under the hood. So end user, as they are working on a Word, PowerPoint, or Excel document, or PDF, or AutoCAD file, will classify the data either manually or automatically. And if we have encryption in play with the label, we will store the encryption keys in Microsoft. So the, the document will be uh, on that workstation or wherever, but the encryption keys to access it is gonna be stored near Azure. And as the end user goes and reopens the document or as it's being shared out, we are going to check access rights on that document level before we unencrypt it for the end user. 
So really cool functionality with it. If the end user leaves your organization and you revoke their rights, they won't be able to open those files going forward. Maybe they took a stuff, bunch of stuff, put it on a USB as they were leaving. If the encryption is included on those documents, it doesn't matter that they took it on stored on a USB because it's encrypted and they have to access, they have to check your access rights before they open those files. So again, end user is able to collaborate on how, however they want, right? Um, Co-collaboration is built into this. So if you're storing it in SharePoint online or Word, multiple users can open that encrypted document and, and, and co-edit it at the same time, which used to not always be the case. And so they fixed that and it's really nice functionality to have now. And users can take it and store it wherever they want. And every time that document is open, whether it's from box, a mobile device, personal device, it's gonna check access rights, right? And you are allowed to put in your access policies at this place and say, okay, you're on a personal device with this file. Actually, you're not allowed to open this document on that personal device. You need to be on your work computer. And so it all ties back into that regular, that document and having that control in place. Um, at any time with the document, you can monitor uh, who has accessed it. So we're going to get the log of every person that's opened this document, as well as if we need to, we can always revoke access, right? So good capability. And then the DLP functionality. Again, that metadata, you know, label is outside of the encryption. And so we can trigger endpoint DLP based on the metadata, right? And so we can come in and say, you know, maybe we can't open the document. We don't, our DLP engine can't see what's in the document, but we know on the outside it says confidential and that is not approved to go up onto mega upload.com, right? So that's, that's great. And again, you can trigger any of the other DLP functionality based on the sensitivity label, right? Again, this is a core component of their classification service from Microsoft, right? We have this out of box stuff like sensitive info types, right? Social security numbers, credit cards, but this is that manual classification service that we're gonna to give to the end user to say, maybe it's an option to override something. You can use this to override your DLP engine to say, actually, I know it's credit cards in that file, but the end user says it's public, so we need to be able to share it out. Or maybe it's a label that says, says approved for external sharing, right? And so this can come in and take you know, maybe something that was sensitive, like, you know, the project eight, you know, or the Phoenix project or something like that, and then share it externally. So it's good functionality. So that hopefully covers kind of the overview of what the technology is. Let's see what it looks like from the end user perspective and how we can use it. All right, so here I am on my workstation with sensitivity labels deployed to my end user. And here is how it's gonna look. This is built into Word again, um, and uh, supported for a lot of older versions as well. It's also built into PDF as well now. So here we can see uh, we have public, general, confidential, and in confidential, we have two sub labels that is available to you. Again, this is customizable to you in whatever your needs are. So as the end user is working on a document, they can tag this as general use. In this case, this is just a metadata tag for my this label, right? It's just simply writing into the document that uh, so I can trigger some DLP functionality. Or end users can just say, hey, this is, you know, Contoso general or, you know, uh, information about the company. You can see I automatically added a header to this document to make it visible that this is general. Again, you can change this to whatever you want. And we can do a header, watermark, and a footer all separately. And in a poorly chosen color choice, I have actually like a dynamic value in this footer, which is uh, hard to read or impossible to read, but it says actually the user that created this document, which in, case, in this case is my Doug account. And so the end user can work on the document, they can save it, they can do all of the things that they need to do and have this document transfer with this data piece. Uh, yep, done this demo before. <laughs> uh, in here, the end user can always change and adjust this. So they can go up to, you know, a more um, uh, rigorous label, right? Coming in and say, hey, this is for encrypted use only. And you can see I put a little... Uh, uh, information to help the end user see what this label does, internal use only, it's, it's confidential, 
but it is internal use only and then there's a recipient only kind of option available to the end user. And I'll show you in another video how to design these labels and some best practices that I've learned with deploying this in the past. So end user, as they're putting this internal use only one, for my end users, they know that this means that this is information that shouldn't re leave, you know, Doug S. Baker, right? You can customize this. You can have links going to your help desk KB articles or your security best practices as part of this. And this is now an encrypted label. So from here on out, this document, every time it gets opened, I'll see the history of who opened it, what they are doing. And this has access rights associated with it. In this case, only employees from my tenant can access this file, right? And so that's a good capability to have. And users also can be given the option to kind of as a, a choose your own adventure label. In this case, I have a recipient only one, and this basically allows the end user to tag and say who should be able to do this with this document and what they should be able to do, right? So the internal use only one is like an IT controlled one or a, a business controlled one where we're telling anytime you use this label, it means these things and users get these permissions to it. This external partner can read it, but maybe they only have view rights and it can't edit the document. We can control that as an IT team uh, directly on the label. This recipient only one is a user driven label where we're telling the end user, you need to tell us or the end user gets the option to decide. So I would recommend deploying out a couple of these different types so that you can test it, right? And so end user can give read access, they can give modification access and a whole other slew of capabilities here, right? So if you wanted a self uh, a document that self-destructed, end user can say, this is only available to for this period. Maybe you're only gonna give viewer rights, maybe not exporter rights. All of that is capable with this solution. So there you have it, folks. Um, hopefully that's a good overview of sensitivity labels and you know, kind of how they work, kind of how Microsoft is building them and how they fit into the structure, as well as a hopefully decent overview of the end user experience, what they should expect to see. I didn't show everything that the product can do and all of the capabilities, but it's a good, hopefully bite-sized look at that functionality. Um, I'll be making a couple more videos on this topic, and if you have questions, let me know.